to be androgynous? Um, androgynous is everything. Um, as far as like who I am, it um it means truly being yourself and like living um without any boundaries. Like when I was young and I was um you know coming out of high school, I was in that weird time of like where do I belong in this world and like what do I want to do and like what's my purpose and so um I literally would be amongst my friends and I just would feel like I don't feel like I'm um super for me too androgynous isn't really about the sexuality of you know what I am it's more so my style so I would just be like oh I don't feel like I'm super masculine or I'm super feminine I feel like I'm just like an in-between so one day I literally um went on the internet and I start googling like different sexual identities and I stumbled upon androgynous or androgyny and I'm like this is literally who I am it's like living with you're just you're just who you are you know you, you channel both you, you may look feminine you may look like you literally can't tell who I am and I, I I love that because I like that mystery in it it's like I don't have to tell you who I am look that makes me that much more interesting so I turn it into a good thing you know it's like this is who I am and um, in this world, I would rather be super interesting and super boring, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just embraced it and I took it and made it a part of my um, my purpose and my mission as an artist. You know, I always carry that message in my music and um, my visuals and everything that I do is just to be yourself and just live with no boundaries. Because at the end of the day, you are who you are. And people in the world sometimes have to find something to identify from their perception so they can understand you, but that's for them, not for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what it means to be androgynous to me. It's just being who you are and embracing both sides of who you are. It may be more masculine, maybe more feminine, but it's just who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what it means for me. Have you faced any problems with it and how have you overcome them? Absolutely. Um, I come from Ohio, small city, Toledo, um, uh, inner city schools, you know, but for me, I think the thing that saved me was my dreams because at a young age, I knew what I wanted to do and that was entertainment. So I was able to, at a young age, develop who I was. So when I got older, like into the world, I knew exactly what I was doing and what road I wanted to go down. And the thing that really helped me was my family embracing um, who I was because my family never really like questioned me or put me in a corner like of like, you know, who are you or, you know, what's your sexual preference or, you know, and try to force me to be, they kind of just let me grow into who I was. And I think that's very important to find those people who support you and who you really want to be because as you're developing, especially at your age, you know, your young teen, these are like the important years because this is who you're going to be. Like you're now are going to start investing into who you're really going to be, you know, once you could turn like 14 and you go on to high school. So um, just finding that support system of people who really believe in you and who give you the opportunity to be you with no boundaries. So I would say that was the biggest thing that really helped me. It was the support system and just um, just putting all that energy into your journey. You know what I mean? Because they can't deny greatness. You know what I mean? So that, And that's what it's about at the end of the day. You know, so um, just own it. Just own it, yeah. Um, how has it affected you in your career? Um... It, it has its challenges. Um, I started off as a dancer, actually, um, predominantly hip hop. So I moved to Atlanta and I start running into these issues with like um, production would want you to be more masculine or uh, like I've literally been in auditions or workshops and they would stop the class and be like, guys, I'm going to tell you now, you know, you need to be more masculine if you want to book. But for me, I took that as a sign of like, you know what, I have this love for music and I just have an undying passion to be myself. And I feel like I can't enjoy what I love to do if I can't be myself in it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, if I love to dance, I want to express it fully, but not like in these different forms. Like, okay, now you got to be like this. Now you got to be like that. Because I feel like that's not why we do it. So I had to really make up in my mind that, Montre, this calling is for you. There's people out there who need those examples and those leaders. And I just did not want to be a person who shied away from my truth. So I chose to own it. And make that a part of my brand, you know. So all it's, I'm always about being fearless and over the top, you know, and just owning it because, again, self love is most important. So at the end of the day, it's about you know making yourself happy first, you know. So that's my thing. Always keep that with you, no matter what. It's about you know ultimately what you want to do because we have one life to live, you know. Um, are there any? Are there like any other outlets you like 
put yourself into besides um, your music and your dance? Yeah, um, finding friends with like minds, you know, and just learning from each other. Um, I uh, watched a lot of documentaries and um, movies and stories. I would really recommend that. Um, it's this, I want to pass this on. This helped me at a very young age. It's um, a documentary called Paris is Burning. And um, I would really love, our mom, I would, uh, off the record, you watch it first to see. It's not really crazy like that, but it's documented in the 80s. So, um, you know, it's, but it really helped me because I needed an, exa an example. And sometimes what we need, because again, when you see people who've done it before, you're like, oh my God, like, then they lived in the 80s. So it's like people been fighting for, you know, um, equality, you know? So it's like I, that motivated me to be someone to carry the torch, you know? So um, I would say watch as many documentaries as you can. Like Netflix has a lot of good ones. Um, Hulu has some good ones. And um, it'll help you find, you know, who you, you know, you're like, you're calling in this world. So I would definitely recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, where do you mostly like shop? Like, where do you find these sunglasses? And oh my god, <laughs> like I love for shopping. So, um, a good a person with style know how to put it together. With regardless, it's not about the cost, you know. So I always say you can buy clothes, but you can't buy style, right? So I am an artist, so um, I have to ball on the budget, as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I um, thrift stores or um. Sometimes, like, my, like these glasses, my, one of my friends just gave them to me. They're like, I want you to, you know, you can have these. I'm like, okay. So, um, mostly thrift stores, or like, mall. I kind of like pick pieces, you know, like, Little Five Points is one of my favorite areas. Um, Lennox, you know, like, the malls, I get pieces here and there. But actually, it's a, it's a lot of it is thrifted. Yeah. And plus, I like standing out. So, I usually find one-of-a-kind pieces at thrift stores versus yeah. a mall. You may have to, um, like, really, like, mix it up to stand yeah, out, you know, because everybody you know, have the same shirt. So it's like I got to really like mix it up. So, yeah. Um, is there any advice you could give me? Yes. I would say, especially at this, at, you know, at your age, really, I think you may know, you know, I know your entertainment, so I know, um, I'm a, I assume that's, you know, uh, like the main path you want to go down, but um, give yourself time to find, you know, what is your thing, and when you find it, really own it. And I'll, always want you to keep with you i always say this remember that you only have one life to live you know what i mean so really find the people who are accepting of you 100 percent and, and growing and, and learning with you you know as you learn yourself and just focus on that don't get caught up in like this new world where it's like more than ever like social media like all that kind of stuff i'm telling you just invest in what you want to do, you know, your dream and anything that pertains to that. Don't let the outside world get in because again, they're trying to understand you for themselves and that's not your that's not your um responsibility. You just be you all the time. All the time because you only have one life to live. And I promise you in the end you'll be so happy because you'll start to inspire people and they're like, wow, because of him I didn't give up, you know. Or because of them, I didn't give up on my dreams. Or I chose to be my 100% self today and go out into the world. So we just have to keep, you know, passing the torch and just um, just always educate yourself, like, on, you know, what you want to do and just um, self-motivated, being self-motivated. And, yeah, I would say that. Just always be fearless and always just focus on those who love you and your dreams. Are there any events in your life that taught you a lesson that you live by? Honestly, I would say it's like um, daily. It's like, especially when I was first starting out, just the kind of like the going to the auditions and the, and the doors closed and the um, having to, you know, cut off certain friends, you know, or um, sometimes even family, you know, you, you never know like um, who that person might be that just doesn't understand you and, you know, might not be somebody who um, needs to be a part of your journey, you know, so... Um, it's just daily just going through um, living in the inner city and just being different and having to um, just develop tough skin. So I think just life in general was like an event for me um, to become who I am. So I had to always, you know, face adversity and just that awkwardness when you come into the room and all that. But the thing that trumped all that is self-love. And that's, that's, that's I, I promise you, when you get to that place... And I, I know they say sound cliche sometimes. They say self love. It really does start there. So I would say um, those were some of the things that really, um, you know, um, that that changed it for me. 
how do you feel like you, in life, every single day, remain fearlessly and authentically yourself? I just remember, I just think of like the the children or the even adults who are in, my, in a position where they um, feel like they really can't be themselves. I want to be someone who breaks down those, those doors for them. So that's what I keep with me all the time. I think of those people who, you know, sometimes um, they don't they don't have an example or they don't have a voice or somebody to be like, wow, if they could do it, I could do it too. So I feel like I have an obligation. If I'm not being who I am in 100%, I'm literally letting someone else down. Like I'm, I'm letting another life down, you know? I, I feel like it was called upon me to be that person, so I can't stifle that, you know, because now I'm messing with, like, you know, the whole operation, you know, of my purpose. So I just try to, that's, that's the main thing. I feel like I can't not be myself because I'm letting someone else down, you know, so that's, that's what I keep with me. That's beautiful. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> so beautiful. I, I don't know, I'm trying to be like, but it really is serious, like, you know, and especially... Oh my God, in entertainment, you have to deal with so much. You know, just uh, you, being yourself, that's the first battle. Then when you are who you are, you still got to deal with like um, the politics of the business and stuff like that. But again, um, I just try to keep that with me at the core. At the end of the day, that, that keeps me humble. It's like somebody did it for me. I, you know, I look on the TV one day and someone, uh, I seen a, a, a commercial or a movie or a a, a documentary or I read a passage I'm like oh my god like for instance um like Prince and Michael Jackson to me are two um examples of androgynous men um who they were so great at what they did it didn't matter what they were so that's another thing I want to leave with you whatever you choose to do it, it could be anything it could be something not even entertaining because sometimes life is funny that uh, we are on a road that leads us to something else I thought I wanted to dance and it led me to music so when you just be amazing at what you do and they can, they, they really can't say this like you know what I mean like mm -hmm. Michael Jackson was moonwalking for goodness sake like who cares what he was wearing or Prince you know he was one of the best musicians of our time, it's like who cares? Like everybody love purple rain, so <laughs> so I want to leave with that too. Mm -hmm. How about um, you, Aiden? Exactly what he said, <laughs> um, and then I also just always try to make sure I'm doing what I love and mm -hmm. what I enjoy doing, and not making sure I'm not like conforming to what anyone else wants me to be. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's funny too. I find I, it's funny when I look back. High school is so funny because it's like when we become adults, none of those people care. Like, it's a totally different world. It's like when we're young, it's so, high school is so funny because looking back, like, half the people who may have teased or said something, they, it's like we literally, it's, it doesn't. So I'm telling you, once that's another thing. Once you make it out of high school, you literally will have, it, it'll be different. So you won't have to deal with as much pressure because you'll be in a position where you can kind of choose your energy that you want to be around too. So, you trust me, it's going to be fine. High school, it's weird, but it, it's, trust me, you'll be fine. I think I have one more question. Um, so, for you, Matre, what do you think, how can an ally help you? Um, I would say, um, being an example to, in a, a doorway for people that may not understand, like, if they understand, educate your friends on a lot of different things. So it's like, you're, you're helping us in a way. Cause it's like, when you're changing minds around who's around you, that's what's bridging the gap. You know, cause sometimes it's just a lack of understanding. Some people just don't know, you know, like if you don't educate yourself outside of high school, a lot of stuff you literally will not know, you know? So I feel like it would just be good to just broaden the horizon. So it's like, I, instead of me having to walk into a room and have a, a situation, and then they learn, they might already know because they spoke to a friend. They're like, you know what? I just, I get it. So that's just what it is sometimes too. Some people literally don't get it. Like androgynous, what's that to them? They don't, some people just think, you know, it's just black and white, but it's so much in between, you know? So some people, they just educate people on the in between. Like if you know something, pass it on so, and to make it easier for somebody who don't even have to deal with that awkwardness walking into the room, you know? That's awesome. Cool. I think we got everything I need. Awesome. Oh, Y'all are awesome. <laughs> Thank you.
pleasure. Yeah.